What's up, YouTube? This is John Hammond with more Pico CTF 2018. This challenge is called RSA Mad Libs in the cryptography category. It says, we ran into some weird puzzles we think may mean something. Can you help me solve one? Connect with this netcat command, which we can copy and paste, and I'll go ahead and start to work with in our terminal here. So, looks like it gives us some information. Uh, a strange hexadecimal number. Uh, hello, welcome to RSA Mad Libs. Keeping young children entertained since well never. Tell us how to fill in the blanks, or if it's even possible to do so, everything input and output is decimal, not hex. So we're given a Madlib with Q and P, and we're going to need the following N. Is this possible, yes or no? So I've done a lot of RSA stuff before, but uh, let's just kind of get the RSA Wikipedia page up and with us. So if you wanted to follow along, you kind of could if you haven't seen this before. So it is a method of cryptography, but it's really just a lot of math and equations. So... For key generation, it actually ends up using, with keys, uh, P and Q, and those are distinct prime numbers. Uh, N is, in fact, P times Q, so in this case, we can just simply multiply them. What I'm going to do is actually go ahead and create a script for this. Let's do ape.py, and I'll put it down here. So let's go ahead and user bin environment python. Let's get pwn, because I'm going to use that to go ahead and connect to this stuff. Uh, we can go ahead and connect or at least just copy and paste this stuff here. So I'll have the host that I'm trying to connect to and the port visible here. Save these as variables so I can go ahead and connect to them. Let's do s equals pwn dot remote host and port. And then let's do s dot close just to be good and stuff. Python ape. Cool, it'll connect to it or not. Let's do our testing in the terminal, and then let's just use uh, the script and the Python stuff to actually keep track of our answers. Because if you notice, if I keep connecting back to this, the numbers that were given do not change. They stay static. Uh, another interesting thing is that this hex that they give us is actually very, very strange, right? I go, I went ahead and copy this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decode this from hex, and... It is, in fact, the flag just at the very, very start of the service, which is strange. <laughs> um, maybe that's intended. Maybe that's not intended. I would assume the latter. Um, but for the sake of learning, for the sake of education and stuff, uh, I'm going to go through the rest of this challenge anyway. But if you just wanted to be a cheapskate, go ahead and submit the flag. You get points with that. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, we can go ahead and connect to this. We know that our notes, let's just take note of these down here p given this, and, or, that should have been q given that, and p given that is just that. Wow, I suck at typing. So, let's go ahead and just send line that. I'm not going to receive in here, because there's a lot of data that we would have to deal with. Again, just going to go ahead and send information with this, rather than receive, so we can do all the testing in our command line interaction. And I do want to know what that value is, actually. So let's Python that. This. So we can keep track of these and go ahead and submit them as we move through the service. Yes. Oh, we need to actually tell it. Yes, it is feasible. So sunline string, yes. And then fill it in. There's that. Okay, a new Madlib. We're going to need the following Q. That should be possible as well, because knowing this equation, n equals p times q, we can just go ahead and divide it. So s dot send line. Yes, that's totally plausible. And let's just keep a Python shell available to us that I'll just calculate answers in. We'll take n and divide that by p to determine our q. S dot send line string. Paste it in there with this math. Oh, I killed the connection. That's fine. That's why we're keeping track of these answers. And great. So let's do that again. Yes. Paste in the answers that we already have. Yes. Paste in the new answer that we have. Cool. Now we have E and N. That's just fine. Okay. Given E and given N, maybe we can factor this. Let's find out. Let's just bring it to factordb.com. Paste it in there. Looks like it is composite. It is prime. So, I'm sorry, it is not prime. So we can say no, that is not possible. And that's correct. 
So let's send that as well. Send line n. Great. Okay. Next one, we need to know the totient of n. Okay, so the totient of n is just p minus 1, that quantity, times q minus 1, that quantity. And you can find that over here as you're reading more about RSA. So let's go ahead and determine that information. Let's do... Because that, that only happens because these are prime, right? Oh, I should paste these in. Multiply by... This minus 1, we have an answer. S dot send line, yes, because we know it is going to be feasible. And then S dot send line string of that input. We'll keep track of the answer just as a comment as we've been doing with everything else. And we'll just grab what we've tested with over here in our Python shell. Okay, yes. And then it wants to know that information. Oh, I totally failed. My bad. Okay, yes information that we already know. Wow, I keep hitting uh, control C or control shift C when I'm trying to work with my command line, not knowing that I'm not in my command line because I'm a fool. Let's turn this down as well. I did it again. <laughs> okay, great. Now we have plain text, E and N, and now we're going to need the following cipher text. Okay, we can totally calculate that as well because we know all about encryption, it's C equals M, so plain text raised to E, the exponent mod N, the modulus. So we can say that yes, that is possible. And let's do a POW function wrapped in string, right? Because we need to send strings. We'll use plain text M, oh boy, raised to E, which is three, and then N being our modulus, is the mod the third argument to pow. Let's actually determine what that is, thanks to some handy dandy Python down here. And we have all of this, which I'm just going to paste in here so I can remove the L, and then let's go ahead and send it with yes and ciphertext, great, okay. Now we have, we need the plain text decrypting from the ciphertext, okay? That's not hard either. We know that decryption is just C raised to the D, which is M to the E, and we don't actually have D. Can we determine D when we factor N? Let's try and factor N with factor DB again. Nope, we cannot. Okay, this is not feasible in our case. And that tells us, great, we can move on. S dot send line, no. And now we have P and Q and E. We're going to need the following D. Okay, now that we know D uh, I'm sorry, now that we know P and Q, we can in fact calculate D, because D is determined to be the totient of all those, right? The modular inverse. In fact, let's go ahead and grab that. We will need um, from crypto.util.number, that's built in, I believe. Maybe it's not. You can. You might have to install like PyCrypto or Python Cryptography or Cryptography just with pip. Uh, and let's import inverse. So we're given Q. Let's just create variables for this. Looks like we are going to go ahead and time out. My bad. So P and Q are given. Now to determine D, we actually need to figure out what that totient is or what that phi variable is. And we did that just previously with Q minus 1 times P minus 1, those quantities. And then the D is, in fact, the inverse of phi mod E. I'm sorry, raised to E. Inverse? Actually, I don't know about that. Um, determine D is actually E. Okay, so it's E inverse mod the totient. Uh, I was using the wrong variable name anyway. I was using phi. Uh, so totient, just like filled out like that. So... Now that we've calculated D, we can S dot send line. Yes, that is feasible. And let's actually print out D, maybe. I can just copy all this and put it in Python. Great. Now we have an answer. S dot send line. String of D. And we know that that is that. So which we can paste that in earlier or later. And... Let's go ahead and submit all of these just to move along. 
So we need to know n, copy and paste that. Yes, copy and paste this q. No, we know that answer. The next one we know we do have an answer for. Oh, okay, great. Oh, we did not calculate this. Crap. Let's throw that in Python. Get an answer for that. Hit enter. Yes. Remove that L at the very end. Yes, that's feasible. Fill in the ciphertext. Great. Next, we're going to need the plain text. That is not possible, as we've determined. And then D as the final one which we have determined is possible. And then let's paste it in here. Oh, we got it wrong. What? Did I have the wrong Q? Okay, how about P? Oh, I see the issue. I copy and pasted P, my bad. I didn't even copy the correct D. Fail. Oh, we need to import inverse in our Python shell that we're working with. So import from crypto util dot number, import inverse. Now we can run that code. And D is not defined. Oh, because E is not defined. E should be this guy. Oh gosh, I pasted all of that. <laughs> so E can equal that. That's the most common hex one that we end up working with. Okay, now. Let's copy and paste all this code, let Python run it, and now I have a D that I can actually submit, and should be the correct answer. Great. Let's try this again. Okay. I know this is a very painful video, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, submit. Yes, submit. No, not feasible. Yes, submit. This one is yes, submit. Next one is not feasible. And now we need the D, which we can calculate. Yes, and paste that in. And now we need to figure out the plain text, all this, given all this information. Okay, let's do that. We know we can actually do the full decryption of RSA because we're given N and P. Okay, we can figure out what... Q is then, given N, given P, now let's go ahead and figure out Q can equal N divided by P. Let's take E to be the variable that we know. Submit that. C being our ciphertext. C we can oh, paste in. Did I add a, I did add a value there. And now we can figure out the exact same thing. D, based off the totient, because we know P and Q. And now we can decrypt it, where M can equal C raised to the power of D, all mod N, being the modulus. Okay, let's figure out what this is. Paste. Let's see what M is. We have this, which I will copy paste here and remove the L. Now let's say yes, that is feasible. Let's submit it. And I did not remove the L. Gosh darn it. Let's send yes, and then let's send the string of M in our Python script. That should be the last one. That should be the last question since we are like doing a full decryption of RSA there. So let's do s.receiveAll and let's just print this out. Let's see if we can actually get the flag at the very end. So let's run Python ape. And yes, that is the last one. If you convert the last plain text to a hex number, then ask it. You'll find what you're searching for. Okay, great. So let's print m dot... Actually, we want to convert it to hex first, right? So we don't need to receive any of this. Let's, let's just roll through it. That's hex. Now... Oh, I'm printing something else up here that I don't care to see. Okay, cool. Let's slice off the two 
first two characters, so that 0x gets removed, and there's no L to represent a long number at the very end, so we don't need to worry about that. Now we can decode it from hex, and we're given the flag. Awesome! Do you know the way to RSA? That is, again, the flag that we have already seen, just from <laughs> ripping it from the top of the service, so kind of peculiar. At least I believe that is, yeah. Let's go ahead and find out one last time in Python. Dot decode hex. Yes, that is in fact the same flag. So <laughs> it gives us the flag right away, just in hex. Um, but if you want to roll through all those RSA Mad Libs uh, using the procedure that I had done, you certainly can. But hey, <laughs> flag's a flag, whatever, right? If you wanted to, since all that service is really just giving you the RSA decryption stuff. You don't even need to communicate with the service once you have all that numbers. Uh, you can just make a get flag script where you just calculate that. But that's kind of handy to have this information if you want to just save it as a service. This can be our get flag.py file, and we can mark that as executable. I believe we can do pwn.context level equals critical, and then that should, no, oh, okay, it's not removing, I maybe, I'm always forgetting that syntax, but, that context not right, meh, pwn.context.log level, that's what it is, I think, pwn.context log level can be critical, yeah, okay, cool, so that removes those opening connection and closed connection information, so if you just want to run get flag, that should do it for you. Let's redirect that to flag.text. Let's save it to our clipboard so we can submit it. Let's move this challenge to be complete. And let's go ahead and submit it for some 250 points. I dig it. All right, cool, correct. Sweet. Hey, before I end the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Cannot say it enough. You are the reason this, chill, this channel, wow, I was going to say challenge. I don't even know what I was doing. You're the reason this challenge still has a breath and is still up and alive and functioning, and I am grateful for you. Thank you. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout-out just like this at the end of every video. You can have your name up in lights at the very end of every video or <laughs> added to this list, whatever reason. I actually might just make something that will like display all these things and like a scrolling montage with flashing colors and random cases and crap like that. It, that might be fun if you guys want that. I don't know. Leave a comment <laughs> if you made it this far into the video. <laughs> uh, $5 a month on Patreon will give you early access to all the videos that I record before they get released on YouTube because I like to do some kind of gradual release schedule where maybe every day or every couple days YouTube will schedule something to be uploaded. Um, and that's normally only if I have a backlog of videos prepared and I'm not, at least lately, I have not been very good about getting some stuff pre-recorded because um, life gets in the way. But when that is the case, <laughs> if you do want that extra love, uh, I am grateful for your support. $5 a month on Patreon and I'm just super duper grateful. So... All right, if you like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Please do join our Discord server, link in the description. It's a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. You can hang out with me, talk to other cool people that are way smarter than me. It's just a great time all around. So uh, thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you on Patreon. Maybe, please, hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> all right, see you later.